all in all, a pretty productive night. Oh, this is going to go back there. Holy bear. A very productive night for, uh, oh, look, your hair is too long. You need to get your hair cut. For Ollie, Ollie, uh, Ollie's team won 18 to 4 tonight. You did, don't you have a triple and a single? And you got an RBI even when you got an out. I saw that. Well, that's good. Wait, did you get to pitch? No, I'm, pitch, I'm pitching and I'm closing up tomorrow. Oh, that's good. Because I'm going to be there tomorrow. You're going to go with Jason. I have to rush over. I I have obligations also other than moppy-headed Ollie. I have to uh, go and get our girl, uh, Royal Emeralds, around, and then I'm going to rush back. I'm going to be there a half an hour before your game. I just don't want to have you late for the game. So Jason's going to take you. You don't need to come all the way up to Pittsburgh with me. Jason's going to take you to the game, and I'm going to be there before you start. So I'll watch the game tomorrow. Uh, Friday, I'm, I'm actually going to miss most of your game. I didn't realize... That I guess I in, in somewhere in my head I realized it, but uh, the Meadows races at night on Friday. So I race at five fifty three. Your game starts at six thirty. So uh, I'll probably catch the last half hour of your game. I think it's a home game too. Uh, and then obviously I'll see all your game on Saturday, and then we'll go home. I guess. Um, Starting to get my week sorted out. I'm not going to be in Kentucky Monday just because uh, they didn't use Atlas Hanover or uh, Atlas Hanover or uh, Steel Cowboy. Now Steel Cowboy will be entered for Tuesday. If he doesn't get in, fine. He can stay in Ontario, I suppose. But for right now, uh, that's the plan is to enter them for Tuesday. Now I won't be there on Tuesday to race those horses. Uh, John McDonald can do the driving for those two. Um, but what about tonight? Not only did Ollie have a good night, we had a very, very good night. Uh, all in all, the horses raced great top to bottom. A couple of horses were a little bit flat. Hakati continues to be a tiny bit flat. I think uh, any sort of eye of the tiger, and he's a winner tonight, um, just kind of got to the wheel of the horse in third. There's a firing line across the track, and he really just didn't. He didn't really lunge at them. He just kind of coasted up beside them and said, hello, going under the wire. And um, that's not the end of the world. He did try 55 and 4, so it's not like he beat 58. But I would have thought he would have taken a run at them late in the stretch to see. But anyway, not a bad mile. So let's start with I uh, really don't care. Man, you know, um, I think she was a little bit sick the last couple of weeks because Scott's qualifier was good. I trained her the next week. I didn't love the way she trained. I thought she was a tiny bit flat. And then um, to go out tonight, I knew I knew she was going to throw a big mile. And then the way she warmed up, she just felt better. You know, come out of the gate really professional. Not hot, not crazy. She didn't blast. She just got out of there and got her work done over to the front end. Um, you know, I, she wasn't super comfortable on the front. But um, I figured somebody would be coming. And, and I knew that it likely would have been Rosie. Uh, Rosie or Kurt Sugg, and it was both of them. <laughs> Rosie cleared to the front, Kurt Sugg was left uncovered. I know down the back stretch she was gapped off a bit. I was just trying to get a, a, a clean, not just a clean line, but a clean race out of her where she wasn't touching her knee, she wasn't getting on top of herself and getting at a gear. So I didn't want to just spark her right up and get her right up on the iron. I just, I knew she had lots left in her, so I just let her advance. Uh, and then around the last turn, I knew she was pretty much a winner. She was sharp as a tack in the last turn, climbing all over them, felt good. And as soon as I got her to the inside, there was a, it was a no doubter. She just powered past them and won the race. The last eighth was the strongest one of the entire race for her. I was really, really pleased with her. Sweeney charging from the far outside would have been second, but kind of dove in a little bit and Kurt came out a little bit. And I heard the uh, crash kind of wheels at the wire. I see. Uh, they're both charted with an interference at the wire. Kurt second, Luke third, a mile and two, two and three last quarter, and 29 and three for, um, for Sweeney. That's a half in 104 and one. That's a half in 58 and two. A big mile for Sweeney. Also, Joel will be very happy. Everybody happy. High fives all around after race number one. I'll tell you, one of the horses that I thought would raced unbelievably good tonight and really didn't show a whole lot. You, you look at the line, you're like, eh, whatever. You look at the race, you might have lost her in the shuffle. Horn player was much, much, 
much better tonight. Come off the track, I let her hold, hobbles out about six holes. She's such a weird horse sometimes. She warmed up strong. She felt like she wanted them out. I let them out and she raced good. I pulled up and I said to Jason, she almost feels like she wants to go without hobbles again. Um, I I want to think about it. I'm going to take her. See how, how salty the straight nomers are three. If they, I don't think they have a straight fillies and mares nomers are three at the Meadows. If they do, how salty is that crew? Because I think this filly's sitting on a 56 mile. 56, a strong 57, 56 mile. Is that good enough? Do they even write the class? I'm going to do a little homework. You don't have to. I'm going to do a little homework and find out for myself. And um, and and think about it. Think about what I'm going to do with Warren Player. She was good today. Very good. I was really impressed with her. A sneaky good today. Then we went out in the next one. The line looks ooh kind of tough on Born to Dance. I don't feel bad. You know, I was like, ah, I could have done this. Ah, I drove him a little hard. Nah, I don't feel bad. This horse is a big Clydesdale, and he makes you work him. He makes you work. I'll tell you a horse that went a hell of a mile was I'm Fancy. Like, I saw, um, we're going around the first turn. It's a bit of a firing line, and I wanted a stiff mile into Born to Dance. I wasn't going to get it dropping him into the five hole. At this point, I don't know what a Janelle Granny is. I don't know this thing sitting on a 53 mile. It shows 2-4 in Paulding. I just want to get out of the way of the riffraff, drop him over to the front, you know, either race him on the front. Now we get that screen and shadow roll on him. Nothing bothered him. Either race him on the front or get covered up with a little bit of speed. Uh, I didn't really want to take him back to fifth, but I didn't know we were going to go 27-56 either. At that point, you have to commit. Anyway, I, I, I rolled him out. It shows me three wide at the quarter. I wasn't three wide at the quarter, but I was three and a half wide around the first turn. Uh, cleared over the front, and Nick Clagg's horse was still really rammy. So I, uh, he popped out of the two hole. Of course, I'm going to let him go. We're going to half and 56 and a piece 57. He clears back to the front. I see in, uh, I see, uh, I'm fancy like three wide in front of the stands. I'm like, oh my God, this is turning into a dog's breakfast. So uh, Born to Dance backed up a little bit. He, he, you know, he, he's first time with a screen on. He's a little, he's trying to gauge his, his depth perception a little bit, I think. And I just let him coast back. I grabbed a hold and let Ryan in the two hole and then, you come again, again down the back stretch. I was like, Jesus, a little fancy. A little, a little rough on the fancy tonight. But I was no easier on Born to Dance. They finished second and third. Big miles. I mean, if you erase Janelle Granny from the equation, I'm fancy like 54 and 3, 29 seconds. Born to Dance, 55 and 1, 29 seconds. Two very, very good lines, especially when you see the bit of the Chinese love letter with the O's. Well, there's no X's, but there's O's. <laughs> At this, my father used to say that. I don't even know if he's allowed to say that anymore. Um, O's all over the place with both these horses. I'm fancy like shows being parked for most of the mile. Uh, born to dance, three wide to the quarter. But as I said at the start, I don't feel bad. Both these horses were, were really kind of drilled on and screwed down really, really tight. Turn that down. Screwed down really, really tight. And um, they were ready to go there, right? And a lot of people message me after, oh, I guess I'm fancy like someone going to the next generation. Just hold on. Hold the phone. I know that uh, I'm Fancy Lake went faster than Venice Blue Chip, but uh, Venice Blue Chip's at the half. Last half and 56 and a piece, last quarter 28 and 1. Um, but she doesn't have that those hard training miles that, that uh, I'm Fancy Lake has had. Now, she will. She's had a, a stiff mile tonight, 7 back at the half, mile and 57 flat, 28 and 1 you know, spark her up. And she was really grabby. I think if I hadn't been able to drop in behind, uh, sit her in the four hole when I moved her, she would have had a little more pop to her, but I had to come a long way from fifth. And I had to really fight with her to let that gentleman in in front of me. But you got the eight hole and don't leave. You don't get ahead of the six horse. I wouldn't be okay with it. And I certainly wasn't going to do it to him. So I just let him down in front of me because you're supposed to. That's why I guess. Um, but I thought she raced good. Now, she has the next, she is going to the next generation. She has the next generation on July the 1st. That's nine days away. Uh, race bike about four, three, four days out. Venice Blue Chip will be tight and ready to rock for the next generation. Bigger track will help her a little bit too. I thought she was very, rather good and actually Paycheck Princess, Chris Lems told me he was really, really impressed with her. 27 and four in the end of it a mile, 58 and two. He said, open bridle, she's kind of quiet. You know, we can change some stuff on her, start letting her hobbles out, take those bell boots off, just stuff like that. Um, 
and I think she'll she'll grind into a really nice filly. What was her last half? Her her mile was fifty eight and two, twenty seven and four. She's at the half. She's at the half in one hundred one and two. Last half in fifty seven flat. A good mile for Paycheck Princess, and B Lisa won just about as easy as you could have a horse win tonight. It was a no doubter from start to finish. And I said to Jason after we pulled up, I said, "Yeah, you can take her out of the claimer." You don't have to worry about her for now. She can do in any of these classes. She was ultra strong tonight. Now she was in cheaper. She was in the maiden. But the way she did it, coming off a qualifier in 2-5 nonetheless, this filly's got some pop to her. Mare, six-year-old mare, has got some serious pop to her. And I can't wait to... She's a bit of a... She can be a little rude filly, a little rude mare in the barn. Doesn't like a tongue tie and stuff like that. But um, put her on the track. Ooh. She is all business on the track and certainly looked very, very professional going about her work tonight. Just a, a great mile from her. Um, Stomber Jacotti, as I said, I thought he should have at least given the, the winner a scare, right? We got away in the four hole. I wasn't moving him again this week. Uh, the rail horse got away in the two hole. You know, he beat me three quarters of a length. The other horses kind of drove away from us a little bit. I, I, a little bit of a disappointing mile. I know, 55 and 4. I know. It's a, where are you going? Inside. Okay, start putting your stuff in the washer, okay? And you got to, hey, what? don't rip everything out of the car. And you got to have a shower, too. Um, so, Stomer Jacotti, I thought raced adequate. 55 and 4, 29. The line looks nice. I just need to see a little bit more from him. He's been racing every week, all spring into the summer. So, is he a little tired? Maybe. I don't know. He feels like he could be and then not be. Certainly was sharp as attack warming up tonight. So, um, I just, I'd like to see a little bit more from him. Now, Mopar Baby, this is the first time we ever roughed her up. I, I had a look at the four hole going around the first turn and I said, no. No, I'm not getting way fourth to be first over again or get locked in with her. No, I'll take my chances at the front counter right up there. And I just kept coming with her. 28 flat, but we were rolling. 56, Kurtzug clears to the front in a big rush. Uh, funny story. I want to check this. Where do I check it? She is. Huh. Uh, unwritten chapter is a five-year-old chapter seven brother to Spirit of Dio. They give good money for this horse. I remember when this horse went through the ring. So, a uh, little odd tidbit. Johnny gave me that tidbit uh, about unwritten chapter. Dro just absolutely jogged 55 and 1. Now, I'll tell you this about Mopar Baby. Yeah, she tried at 57. She could have been 7th easily. Chris Lambs popped out of the two hole down the back stretch, and every time he got head to head with Mopar Baby, she went on a bit. Now, we got her plugged up pretty good. Ear plugs on, ear hood on. Uh, she wears a snake cord. And she gets scorched pretty good at half 56. It wasn't special. 57, last half, 1-1, one, one, last quarter, 31. Bit of a staggering tempo. But she fought on to be second, right? <laughs> Chris, Chris had said to me after, it's a great story, but maybe mine just hung a bit. Well, yours did. So did Hunter's. So did Elliot Deaton's, who come on to be fifth. Aaron's was in behind me. He didn't get by me. I mean, everybody had an opportunity to beat me easily for second, and she hung on in a photo I thought it was a pretty pretty gritty trip, you know. I don't like when she gets roughed up, but that was what was going to happen tonight, right? It's the way it was. Um, and she took it on the chin and uh, and raced very, very well. So although uh, I didn't like the 56 half, I do like the fact that she was second and showed a lot of grit and determination to do that. So a big, big big day for us. I have two videos to post. One on my way over talking about the training this morning. You'll get that at the same time you get this one. But Impress really don't care. I guess we will try her in the Sire Stakes in Buffalo next Wednesday. She'll go to Ryan Swift. I I guess we're going to, at least for now, go down the same road we did with Bomb Hugger. Bounce from this trainer to that trainer, but kind of half-ass base her out of Northfield for now. So she'll go to Buffalo, which is just a couple hours down the road for us. She'll head down to Ryan Swift's on uh, tomorrow or Friday. She is going to enter her in the Sire Stakes. So, for those of you, surely none of you that are owners of Really Don't Care don't have your New York license. 
knowing that she is a Chapter 7, knowing that she was going to the Sire Stakes, surely there's no one out there that isn't licensed in New York. If you are, could you please get that done tomorrow if you don't mind? So, really don't care. We'll be heading to the New York Sire Stakes on Wednesday afternoon of next week. I'll swing by Buffalo and drive her. Um... A huge race from Sweeney. Very impressive, that Colt today. Horn player I thought was sneaky, sneaky good. Uh, born to Dance and I'm Fancy Like raced their asses off. And you know what? Heading into a big race, Born to Dance needed that. And I'm Fancy Like gave, gave an awful tussle. Uh, and easily could have been easily could have been the Philly. We said, oh, maybe we'll send her to the next generation. And I could do that. I just think Lather Up does not have the same, did not go under the same physical scrutiny that I'm fancy like did over the last three weeks. Uh, she had a great race tonight. She had a great qualifier last week. We'll tighten her up three days out in the race bike, and I think you'll see a huge mile from uh, lather up or from the lather up Philly Venice Blue Chip. She was good tonight. So was Paycheck Princess. Only horse that missed a check was Paycheck Princess, but raced very good in doing so. Uh, B Lisa. Every so often we get just a breath of fresh air, right? A horse that just came out of nowhere and just jumped forward. This filly's got lots left in the tank. And I don't... Mare, this mare, this six-year-old mare with 18,000 made coming into the race has lots left in the tank. We'll see how she does next week. Uh, Stumber Jacotti, as I said, a little bit flat. Just need to see a little bit more. And Mopar Baby, yes, she was tired. Yes, she got beat up. But you know what? She went down swinging and held on for second. Tooth and nail fought to the wire. Very impressed with this filly uh, all year long and certainly again tonight. So with that, I'm going to let you go. I'm all done. i got to get a good night's sleep. Tomorrow morning we have uh, Cherahola. For those of you out there, my partner's in Cherahola. Scratched because I can't go with her that late. I have to get over the meadows. I'm just going to train her in 2-2 maybe before the qualifier. So don't worry about the Cherahola scratch. There's nothing wrong with her. It's just timing. I'm not, I want to go with her. I'm going to train her a good strong mile. She's qualified now anyway. I'm going to train her a strong mile on uh, around 9.30, 9.45. So if you're in the area and you're one of my partners with Cherahola, going on the track in the race bike around 9.30, 9.45, uh, Crantini is in to qualify tomorrow. I don't mind the seven hole. I saw him today. Um, seems okay. We'll see how he is tomorrow. And then uh, most importantly to me, outside of Crantini tomorrow, is the qualification of uh, Gypsy Hill and Sun and uh, Sedona Hill. A little pissed off that they didn't get a prep race for us for the next generation. But it is what it is. We'll qualify them. I'd like to see a mile and 59 or two minutes out of both of them tomorrow heading into the next generation in uh so with that, I'll let you go. Hope you guys had a great day. I hope you had a lot of fun watching the races tonight. It was a very good night for the stable, and I can't wait to see what tomorrow brings. We've got Royal Emeralds, a number of other horses racing tomorrow. Vaquero Blue Chip on Friday. we get got Ollie playing baseball Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I'm home in Kentucky Sunday. Back home, I'm going over to qualify and school some horses Tuesday morning at the Meadows. And then the real chaos begins. So with that, uh, I'll talk to you all soon. Have a great night. Take care.